Bronwyn McGrath. I'm the Managing Director and Founder of And Health, which is Australia's only dedicated digital health accelerator and commercialisation support organisation. I started life doing commerce at UWA um, and was a, quite focused on a, pursuing a pure business career, but got a job early on with Neurosciences Victoria and entered the life sciences sector. So as a non-scientist, I've been in the life sciences sector for almost 20 years. And that career I've spanned running an industry association in New Zealand, business development and corporate development roles, uh, seven years in venture capital, which is probably what I'm more known for, and then more recently founding And Health as Australia's only dedicated digital health commercialisation organisation. So it's been a long journey and quite varied. And I guess one thing that distinguishes me is the fact that I do come to the sector from a pure commerce and law background uh, versus a science, science and engineering background. And Health is a dedicated organisation that focuses specifically on helping our digital health companies, specifically clinical grade digital medicine and digital therapeutics companies navigate a rapidly changing commercialisation pathway to global markets. Our flagship program works mainly with mid-stage companies who have a product and some early customer traction and we help them prepare themselves for institutional grade investment, so venture capital or beyond and international market entry. So our first 10 companies that went through our pilot program have now raised over $30 million. Uh, they've served over 70,000 patients and they have undertaken 28 clinical studies and over 770 commercial pilots. So we work very hard with these guys to make sure that they have a sustainable business model, first and foremost, but they also have the evidence set to justify their capital raising and their customer engagement via their clinical data, but also their health economics and commercial validation data. We work a lot with regulated companies and we advocate for regulation of, of software-based health interventions, but based on the, the kind of core principle that these technologies, if they are making a claim that they change a clinical outcome, they should need to provide evidence of safety and efficacy as per other types of interventions. So we've worked with over 300 companies in the last two and a half years, and we've got some really great insights into the emerging sector here in Australia. And Health itself came about because when I was raising $45 million for Adherium, what we noticed was that in Australia we were still talking about electronic medical records as, as, as the be-all and end-all of digital health, but we weren't really embracing the broader definition that was defined by the FDA and other international regulators. So we really wanted to explore the market here and make sure that those companies that were working in those spaces were supported in the absence of any other targeted programs. One of the things that distinguishes And Health is its globally unique model, and it's non-profit and non-equity taking, but what we do is we work with a multi-sectoral group of heavy hitting partners who are best in class operators in their particular vertical. So we work with Novartis, Planet Innovation, RMIT University, Potential X, Oz Biotech, Health Excel, um, Curve Tomorrow and the Murdoch Children's Research Institute um, and all of our members and partners. But what that means is that we can bring industry specialists around our companies. What the core value of And Health is, is that you harness the collective. So you harness the power of a multi-sectoral, multi-skilled collective and we bring that also in-house to our team. Grace Lethleen who joined me who co-founded um, most of the programs and, and has been the, the key person in delivering the vision in my head. She is an engineer and a scientist by training so we're very conscious of having a really diverse skill set but also we really accept as a company that's been largely remote since inception due to the fact we started the company when I had my first child that everyone brings their whole human to work. And I think COVID-19 has really shone a light on the need to accept the whole person when you hire and you engage with people in, in a working environment. You know, we're sitting here today and we can see into each other's homes. Uh, that's been something that's been, I think, quite the eye-opener for more traditional managers and people who take a more compartmentalised view towards work. But we also bring this unfiltered and kind of fearless feedback approach to our companies that we work with. So those companies get a multi-sectoral C-suite advisory panel that works with them for nine months. The companies that are accepted into And Health Plus have to tolerate being challenged on every single assumption that they make about their business. And in some cases, in fact, in many cases, those companies will come out of the And Health Plus program with a different business model than what they thought they had or 
where they went in thinking that they would need to do work was not where their panel suggested that they needed to do work. But I think the interesting thing about that is um, for those companies willing to submit themselves to the rigour and the, the time and the challenging nature of the program have really thrived. One of the companies that we love to talk about is DoseMe. And we love DoseMe because it was an amazing technology. It was developed in Brisbane and it was acquired by Tabula Rasa, which is a NASDAQ listed company. But it also makes us a little bit sad because it was acquired really early on in the piece because it was unable to access capital in Australia. And we are seeing a real issue for digital health companies specifically in accessing appropriately skilled capital, but capital in general in Australia. So Dose Me exited early and just like in our early biotech industry days, it would be great if we could keep these companies here for longer before they engaged in those exits and so that they were well enough funded to do large-scale partnerships before they were acquired by foreign multinationals and so that they were big enough that they had a significant presence and employee base here in Australia as they go global. I think COVID-19 really offers us the opportunity to do that even more now so that because everyone in the world is at home. So we are now faced with a, it's not just us wanting to do things by video, everyone has to do things by video. So I think we have an opportunity, but DoseMe was just such a stellar piece of technology, precision dosing for vancomycin and other drugs. Australia's need for a connected healthcare system is now greater than ever. One that's accessible, progressive, and importantly, secure. It will mean wherever you are, your health information can be safely accessed. As can mental health support. It'll mean you can have your symptoms checked at home. Or even download an electronic prescription. It's about connecting Australia to a healthier future by connecting you to better healthcare. What we see in digital health specifically is that the number of sectors or subsectors that interface with digital health is enormous so more so than in medical devices or biopharmaceuticals which can be quite narrow verticals to work within we see a sector that has to effectively interact with payers um, in a way that is often requires a different business model in every different jurisdiction because the payment pathways and structures are different but also has to interact with uh, the IT sector and have skills from the IT sector, has to interact with insurers of various forms, both life and health insurers, has to interact with global medical device companies, global pharmaceutical companies. You know, it's an extraordinary patience at the centre of everything we do, clinicians, hospital management, administrators. We have to, this is a sector where you have to actually be extraordinarily abreast of, of the drivers and the, the processes in, in, in a broader sector or a broader range of sectors than we see for, say, something like a, a, a class two medical device development plan, which is quite straightforward. And that's what was at the heart of how we created and Health. It's only by collaborating and not duplicating that we can actually all transform the Australian economy. And that was true before COVID and it's even, even more important, I think, and even more true in a post-COVID environment. The recent award by the Biomelbourne Network was an extremely humbling experience, but I think the most important thing about that award actually is focused on people who have led collaborative initiatives and, and back to the theme, I guess, of the things I've been saying. For me, that's an award for all the foundation members and the staff of And Health because you know, no one does this without a team. I am privileged to work with probably one of the best teams I've ever worked with in my career. I, um, the award itself, I think, shows what we've been able to accomplish by everyone. You know, some of the corporates putting significant amounts of money into the pot, but also bringing together a group of people who want to work towards the common good and demonstrating that the impact that you can have when you put for-profit enterprise aside. So as a former venture capitalist, people think it's somewhat counterintuitive that I run a non-profit organisation. But putting profit aside at the nascent stages of an industry industry's development and bringing that collaboration together and showing that it can make a difference. And I think that's a model that could be adopted in a number of sectors outside of healthcare. Um, and so for me, the award actually just demonstrates that we did something really cool together.
Firstly, I would say if you don't have a science and engineering degree but you're interested in health, by all means pursue a career in health. There are, there are a multitude of skill sets required uh, across the healthcare system and my space being taking new technologies to market, I've always actually found that my ability to distance myself from the technology and look very critically at the business side has been an advantage in a multidisciplinary team. I think you need to really look at finding yourself some good advisory, I call them my, my personal advisory board, but other people would probably call them mentors, and find a diverse set of mentors who can help you identify opportunities. I've been really fortunate. My career progression, even landing in life sciences in the first place as a business qualified person, has largely been driven by luck, opportunity and chance. Um, but I, every opportunity I was given, I went above and beyond to maximise what I could learn in that opportunity and then also what I could deliver as my career got a little bit more mature. I think. The one thing for me for people entering health is they need to understand and embrace why it is a regulated market. It is not like fintech. If you got if you if you get it wrong, you can fundamentally hurt somebody and in worst case scenario people may die. Therefore, you need to take the responsibility of working in this space and developing technology extremely seriously. And you should see um, regulation is a way of ensuring that you are meeting the standards that are expected globally for these types of technology. So we see a lot of tech entrepreneurs coming to the space looking to avoid regulation. I, I, I think that that's short-sighted from a personal risk perspective but also a, a commercial perspective because if you're not regulated, neither will your competitors be. And what we do know in Australia is that we don't have a big enough capital market to take on a, a team out of the US head to head in a, in a non in a space where there's no reason for competitive defensibility so no third party creation so a regulatory approval that gives you a, a, a step ahead you need to look strategically at those things i think the other thing is is that build your network and and invest in your network there's a lot of networking classes that say you should think about the things that, you know, people can do for you. I would actually suggest that rather than thinking about what people could do for you, think about what you can do for people.